I hope this is all working. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Patrick from Dutchy Tech Tips. Oh, the f echo feedback. Right, turn that off. And I should not have any feedback. Oh, that's good. A first time live streamer. Yes, that's that's thing. Anyhow, sorry, folks. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Patrick, and I am from Dutchy Tech Tips. And welcome to our very first podcast called Dutchy Tech Discussion. I have created this podcast uh, for in a way of having an opinionated discussion about technology. This is what's um, this is raw, live, and unedited, like our videos are, and. This is a bit of a new and exciting experience for me because I usually say I'm um, uh, trying to find something to say because usually people say that I can't even shut up. I just keep on talking. So I hopefully I'll get used to this whole live streaming um, situation. So I wrote some notes down on how I wanted to do the show. So a bit of a, a format, if you will. Uh, I might tweak it. I don't know how I'm going to, uh, what's the word to describe to how I want the show to go in the future. This is just one of Patrick's, one of his one-off ideas possibly, a, um, who knows. It's just one of those things that I want to experiment with and hopefully you are along with the journey. So, um... So I was, uh, obviously I was been talking about the new podcasts. Um, so this is about having, not just about talking about what's happening in my life or what's happening at Dutchy Tech Tips, but it's just more of an, an easier way to create content quick on the fly, easy to just click a button, start courting, sort of all ad lib, make it up as you go sort of uh, con type of content. And the plan was to record it onto the hard drive and then upload it to YouTube later. And also want to push it out to Spotify. But there is a bit of a cost involved in doing this, which I'm hoping to get some ideas on how to monetize this, so to speak. Uh, as this will be our long form content. Um, long-form contents, and um, I was thinking about leveraging Patreon or getting away for sort of ad sponsors, so people can sponsor the podcast, or have um, Patreon privileges, which allows you to, um, obviously everybody's in different time zones, I'm actually here in Palmerston North, New Zealand, recording live. I was hoping to go record a lot earlier than that, but uh, I was a little bit unprepared and uh, said, Patrick, I need to push through and get this podcast. I need to start making choices because COVID hit. Um, my, I've been so busy that I haven't given Dutchy Tech Tips the attention. And this is just something I'm trying to experiment and see if it works. If not, then back to the drawing boards. Um, but back to the Patreon idea was to, if you missed it live, Patreons will be able to watch it um, on demand before the rest of uh, rest of the world sees it. So you'll get a sort of a privilege um, and maybe another tier that you get a shout out and say thank you to these Patreons. Um, um, I'll be interested to hear what you think about this, uh, what I and Dutchy Tech Tips should go in terms of monetizing this, and feel free to reach out on our socials. I'm hoping to, um, um, obviously I only got one screenshot at the moment, which is just Dutchy Tech Tips and explaining what this podcast is. I hope if I have another half an hour to tittle with paint.net to add some more slides so you can have a sort of a slideshow instead of looking at the same thing. 
Also, I have a little friend of mine, and it's called a blue glass of water beside me. I'll just take a sip. Ah. Because when you talk, you need to lubricate your mouth because otherwise you're going to get a sore throat. All right, I think uh, I sort of stalled enough. Um, hopefully I have to try and stretch it out to an hour, so I hope I can find topics that probably entertain you, educate you, bit of history, news, um, uh, maybe a few pop quizzes. Um, um, I don't know about today doing a pop quiz because it uh, takes me a... F what I'm trying to do with the pop quiz, though, is... Um, from all my favorite TV shows um, and see if people can guess like phrases or um, or quotes, something on the lines of that. And I'll say, I'll, yeah, I'm still messing with the ideas, um, messing with the idea of it. Um, so it'd be very interesting to know... Um, what what people sort of respond to, and um, and I hope that uh, um, the content is entertaining enough to just listen and um, whatnot. Right, um, the next point of order or topic on my uh, Google Doc lists. Uh, uh, today's podcast is for Sunday, the sixteenth of May. 2021 yeah I'm sort of flying on the seat of my pants on this podcast and feel free to laugh at me because it is funny because I'm laughing at myself I say Patrick you gotta do better than this you gotta do better than this um, so the whole point of this podcast as I said was the let's have an opinionated discussion about technology now there was been a Let's get to the sort of the first topic that I wanted to cover. Um, a while ago, I did a video. Um, it's called a vlog, and that was probably. Hang on, let me just open up YouTube and let's see when was that. As I said, I just all ad lib off the cuff. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, this will not get me into trouble and load up videos All right videos content right so in this roughly after Christmas of 2019 um, that's when I first that's the last video I published and everything just went downhill from there um, what happened was that's unaware I only found out in last year around about sort of around about April last year, this time last year, that uh, we had to go, um, um, Jacinda Ardern, our New Zealand Prime Minister, or if you want to call Auntie, Auntie Jacinda, whatever you want to call her, <laughs> she, uh, with her cabinet and the rest of the government, um, had to restrict the border, because uh, when you have a population of about, I think it was at three to four million, five million in New Zealand, oh, I have to look that one up. Um, shut down uh, for four weeks, and because I work sort of like a, um, I work during the week, and uh, and uh, commute to work and all that sort of stuff, and. Uh, um, I could have had the opportunity to record some videos. Yeah, but the problem is that I could not allow to leave my house and do it because we we're in quarantine, we we're in lockdown. And so when sort of uh, there was very heavy restrictions about going to supermarkets and stuff like that um, that we had to follow. Um, unfortunately... At home, I have ADSL broadband internet. And uh, I'm a bit of a Netflix uh, watcher and, um, uh, you know, the usual YouTube. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi module 
oh, excuse me, the Wi-Fi uh, router uh, crapped itself out. And what I had to do was tether, um, to connect to anything to the internet, I had to tether my phone and use my two degrees data. And I chewed it up very quickly. Uh, I think I had limits on it and um, and whatnot because I used, uh, I watched Netflix on um, my computer. And what I do at home is I plug the laptop, uh, have the Wi-Fi on, and then I plug an HDMI table uh, cable into my TV. Yes, and they'll probably say, Patrick, why don't you get a smart TV? No. No, thank you. I just want to stick with what I got. Is it being a being a bit of a tight person with the wallet? That's what some of us, because I am Dutch, and that's what some of the people uh, stereotypically call us is very tight in the wallet. But no, that's not the case. It's just um, it sort of works. And I am planning to do a video. I'm hoping uh, once I. A sort of a, like a personal home video, uh, sort of a personal project for home, which I like to probably record a few videos, like a special topic project. I'm still working in the in the title lines to create a sort of like a little Netflix box, like a little small computer that I can plug in my cabinet and I can just don't have to use my laptop and just uh, it's just, and just easier that way. I don't have to grab a long extension cable for the laptop and all that and grab a mouse and I'm still working out the details on that. But what happened was that COVID's um, no internet and then things just got worse and worse with um, I had to wait for weeks to get um, I have a place where I can buy excuse me um, called uh, PB Tech now a big shout out to those people that um, they helped me out a few bit of binds before but it was just because of the whole COVID lockdown shipping and all that sort of stuff um, made it very difficult um, made it very difficult to uh, get the products um, so took a while um, took a while I was struggling, and then I um, and whatnot, and then in August, I uh, in August last year I had um, managed to get it. Took a while to 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 do some research, find the uh, wireless access point, and then unfortunately, I think I set it up and haven't really made it go live or like set it to production, as the the geeks speak. Uh, sort of in the development, you got development modes and then you got the production mode. And um, what happened was um, I had a medical problem that required me to be, I had to have surgery. I'm not going to go into too much details. Um, I had, um, I'm not trying to gory, uh, make it all gory details. I had to go to hospital, I had a fever, nothing COVID related um, and I sort of nearly went sort of sepsis and I was in hospital for probably about five days, um, had a few, um, had an operation and um, well basically I had my appendix removed um, but the appendix was not, uh, something called peritonitis um, Usually, when people uh, when people have like get all sepsis or sort of um, get all like getting signs of having an infection, it's usually when um, the appendix bursts. And when appendix bursts, uh, things gone a little bit sideways. But mine was a very weird case. Um, but then eventually, I got stats, and it's twenty twenty one now. Um, getting a bit better. Uh, and I've just been too busy. I've been, I work from Monday to Friday. I do volunteering with a charity. Got other projects in the pipeline. So it's been pretty busy. Um, and this is probably the first chance. Well, I probably had multiple chance, but because I've been hit back with so many negatives 
It's just it was very hard to get out of that hole, if you want to call it. Um, but that, that's sort of something my that my life sort of um, technology. I'm just looking at my computer screen. I may have. I'm very at terrible spelling. There's one thing when I was doing my IT degree, our lecturer was always spelling things wrong because IT people always use spell checks and spell check just comes in, but sometimes you don't even learn from <laughs> um, that. But because of COVID-19, um, I would like to do something, and I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this, if I'm going to continue doing these podcasts. Excuse me, I need another drink of water. <sighs> Excuse me. Is um, COVID nine back to the COVID nineteen topic? Um, I actually seen some good positive out of it. Um, when we were in lockdown, the views have like our watch times and views have skewed, and I bet a lot of people have seen that. Uh, people with more content, and I wish I had a bigger content library to cater to more people. That's the only thing that I feel bit upset about that I could have done better, I could have pushed out more content better, and there were, in terms of technology uh, as part of this discussion, was that um, YouTube actually had some technical drawbacks because it kind of, when the lockdown happened, it felt like a denial of service attack, like the demands of the server, like everybody's hitting, hitting, hitting those YouTube servers. So they had to um, sort of dial it back. But see, I have this problem that I just get all fascinated about one thing and then I just, um, i got to stop this uh, procrastinating and uh, jumping from subject to subject. Um, it's <laughs> it's one of those things that i got to, um so uh i hope you guys are still listening so far um and i promise i'll get better at uh live streaming <laughs> this is all new to me and um and i just hope that uh i hope everything is still um let's just have a quick look at 2,443 kilobits per second. So I think we are streaming because I'm not too heavy intensive on the uh, the video. Let's see. I'm just I'm just trying to um, um, uh, let's see if uh, okay. So the audio is still going. Um, yeah, this is just all new to me. I am using OBS, uh, OBS, not OBS Studio, OBS, and um, and yes, sorry. Um, I, I, this is what I, as I said, procrastinating again. But I just want to make sure that the stream after seventeen minutes of me rambling, and I hope it'll get better. Um, let's get to the other topics. Uh, there's one thing I want to talk about is um. I want to show our respect. Uh, this pandemic hit a lot of people. Uh, New Zealand was not quite bad because Jacinda Ardern, our Prime Minister, attacked it early. And um, I think it's sort of, um, as I said before, I wanted to probably do this sort of regularly on every show until probably near the future. There is vaccines coming out, and hopefully that will slow things down. Fingers crossed. Excuse me. And um, I went and did a Google uh, earlier, and I took down some statistics. And I think it's to show respect and sadness and remembrance of the people who died, um, we sh should give them a moment of silence because this is, for me, this is the biggest health crisis, the biggest health events in my life 
uh, since I've been alive or that I'm aware of. Um, obviously, there were probably things like the Spanish flu or the plague back in many, many years ago, way before I was born, those big, deadly uh, things. But this was um, move out swine flu, uh, move out manager cockle disease, uh, move out of the way. This was the big mother of all viruses um, that was just a, a epidemic or pandemic proportions. So I believe it's... Um, as I said before, uh, we need to pay a moment for the silence of 3,383,609 people who died. So I'm just going to pause the mic for a moment, if I can just figure out how to do that, and give those people who died a moment of silence. Uh, thank you for those who are listening with us live or on demand on YouTube or Spotify or whatever listening device you are listening on. Thank you for paying respect to those who died of 3,383,609 people who died. Um, that, that brings real sadness. And I think that number's still going up slowly. Um, let's see if there's a... Let's just refresh since I wrote this down earlier. Um, they're still polling data. Um, come on, it's probably because... Oh! Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Ooh! I think I just lost, I might have to listen to this later, but I think I just, the stream glitched out there for a minute. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, that can't be good. I think it just clipped out. Oh, I can't tell. Hang on, is it still... I think there's a delay. I think it just delayed it. Oh boy. Um, now it's actually 718. 718. Yep, 718 now. Ooh, Jesus. I'll tell you what, doing this live stream is just. Um, so far, we've been live streaming for about. Oh, yes. Sorry, yes. 833, 1% frame drops. Yeah. Maybe I should have a dedicated stream machine because, um, oh, that, that, that was just stupid. Um, but here on the fiber, I want 100 megabit fiber, so that can't be right. Um, so why did that, why did that uh, go all funny? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it. Um, uh, I'll figure things out. Uh, let's see. Well, that's oh good. I think it's probably if I had the uh, tabs open and all should be fine. So the next topic. Um, let's get away from COVID nineteen. Uh, COVID nineteen. So I'll probably be doing that a bit more regularly and um, and. Um, Moment of silences for every show for the upcoming future. Now, the next topic I want to talk about. Um, yeah, I should have 
I should have start with an intro and then say, hey, this is what we're going to be covering. So that's probably an idea that I should. Hey, I'm just experimenting here. So uh, feel free to uh, tell me off and say, Patrick, I'm not listening to you rambling on about nothing. <laughs> Anyhow. Right. So the next topic I want to talk about is Microsoft Outlook outage. Now, there's a reason why I wanted to do this stream, because I really want to talk about this. Because this really ticked me off, and I bet it will tick you off too. Now, what do I mean about um, the Microsoft Outlook outage? Now, the place I worked through during the week, we migrated to uh, Office 365. All right. We've been having nothing but... Um, um, Nothing but having uh, nothing but uh, in-house. The the server was hosted on uh, SBS 2011 on Outlook 2000, no, Exchange 2010. So it's really outdated. Um, oh, don't bump the microphone, Patrick. Um, so we might because it just crapped itself, and so we migrated to things. And you'll think, oh, finally, we got rid of that problem, the uh, problems we're having. But Microsoft gave us, like, you think that just because, um, excuse me, I'll just have another drink. Because I would like to know your thoughts on this. I'd like to know what your thoughts on this. What is better, having an in-house exchange server or having your emails in the clouds. Now, part of the show is about having an opinionated discussion. Now, my opinion is sort of split. And my opinion on this matter is sort of split. And why I am split on this discussion on this is because um, it all depends on money. Now, if I worked it out, uh, it's about 35 US dollars, depending which plan you get on your corporate plan, that gives you probably uh, OneDrive and all these other teams and all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> uh, teams and whatnot. And um, uh, Microsoft Teams. And uh, one of the things that um, it's about. <laughs> It's like more as a more of a subscription based model, which I don't agree with. Yes, I do agree with like uh, Dutchy Tech Tips' uh, emails are hosted on the cloud, uh, which it it's, it's, it's works it works for for us fine. Uh, but there are some things that I do get ticked off, like Adobe, right? Uh, this is actually related to this Outlook because it's all about subscriptions. And um, like there is something called like a converter that you can buy, uh, very expensive apparently, I found out, um, which you can convert PDFs into Word documents, Excel spreadsheets. Like sometimes you have an XML, X, Excel format uh, that's in a PDF and you want to convert it back to Excel again. Or you, uh, it allows you to edit PDFs within the Adobe PDF program. Well, you can buy a license for that, but now you're being charged a subscription fee, which I totally, totally don't agree with. That's the same with uh, the editing software. That's why the pro version, you have to buy a subscription. Now, I don't know how you do that in a commercial setting. I, that doesn't work. It just doesn't. Well, I, I just, from, from my point of view, uh, imagine if uh, Dutchy Tech Tips has 10 editors and you want to use pro version of it and you want to, you'd be monthly paying. No, I just want to pay for the freaking program. I don't care about future updates. If we decide to get new updates, we just buy a new update package. No, we don't want subscriptions. Um, the, and we are getting to a point that we don't own stuff anymore. We are leasing stuff through subscriptions. But subscriptions, 
you this is where the opinion of Office 365 and Exchange, Exchange you're paying upfront costs and then licensing for the licenses. And you get to control whatever you want to do, but the updates you get is free unless you buy the next version, unless there's some sort of Microsoft licensing that I'm not aware of. But there's a big upfront costs. But with the uh, 365, uh, there is also upfront costs, but in the long run, you're paying more. Well, it depends on how you manage your IT infrastructure, but I believe you'd be paying more. Just like you're paying for more, uh, they're trying to fleece more money out of like they're off, like all the other programs I mentioned. But um, what happens, uh, let's see, I think it happened on, let's see what's today, is. today is, so I think it happened on Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. And um, it's got to be Wednesday. Wasn't it Wednesday? I can't remember. It was been a very busy week. On Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday. Let's just... Um, yeah, let's see. Because I found an article on the IT News. Is it IT News? At, uh, it's an Australian website. Oh, yes, it was Wednesday. UTC time. So, okay, all right. That makes sense. Yep. So on Wednesday this week, unless you count, um, was it some people count Sunday as the beginning of the week on calendars. I don't know why. Sunday is the end of the week of the calendar for me. Or well, just the end of the week. Anyhow, so Microsoft uh, Outlook was hit worldwide by this email issue. And they labeled it as the email visibility issue. Okay, so when I was in the office, um, uh, the office that I work at, I was sitting there and I was like, okay, I'm, because I, deal, in, I uh, deal with logistics. Um, uh, I do logistics stuff. And, um, and I looked at it and said, well, hang on, where's the rest of the email? You look in the air and I said, oh, the signature just disappeared, and so I try to click on reply and all that stuff. So what's going on here? And then some of my co-workers come in and say, what the hell's going on here, Patrick? And I was like, well, I don't know. What are you on about? Because this was actually after they told me about it. And I said, oh, just, oh, you're just messing with me. We're not having more email issues again. So I was like, oh. so I come back to my desk, and I checked and said, oh, they are right. So... Why, why? So I thought that Microsoft, well, Microsoft said that it is suffering uh, email visibility issues. And it was widespread of text after being entered into a new message and all existing have no body text at all. Now, one of my clients... Uh, that I do work with in my spare time had that same issue. And I said, hang on, this has got to be an Office 365 issue. But apparently it wasn't. So what happened was, is that a recent update that appears to be the root cause of it both desktop and 365 users, meaning you're on, when it means, I'm just reading off this article here. So when they mean, so basically on-premise exchange servers and 365 uh, cloud-based users had this issue. Now it's like, really, we had issues with the email and geez, it was a very, very, very busy, a very pain in the backside. But, um, I figured that it worked. It didn't work. Uh, didn't happen with mobile, mobile devices, and didn't happen with the webmail. So that gave us a bit of advantage. But the problem I found with um, Office three, like the uh, Outlook Web Access, whatever you want to call it, the web version of the thing, is email signatures are very hard to. Um, I find that in corporate environments to have, like when you set up, from my experience, uh, when setting up things like this, 
when you set up a new user and you log in for the first time, there's Outlook settings that don't get migrated to each individual computer, which makes it very, very difficult to um, handle that thing because you have to keep creating email signatures for every user that keeps jumping over the over the, uh, the divides, so to speak. But what happens is that with the web, it's very hard to get your desktop into there. Um, unless someone has a way uh, way of doing that, let me know because it's quite frantic, uh, frantic and I just couldn't be bothered to go on Google because I've got other things I should be doing than just sitting there all day trying to figure out what's trying to think. Um, so apparently it's world, it was a worldwide problem uh, of text input and visibility problems. And there were confirmed reports of issues impacting Australia and New Zealand users. Now, so because, say that uh, when I looked up in the Microsoft, uh, they have a status that can tell you if Teams are down and stuff. So they're going to say they're going to get it resolved at 3 a.m. Uh, UTC, which um, our time is, we are 12 12 hours behind, so if it's 12 a.m. there, it's 12 p.m. over here. Um, so 3 a.m., the earliest, they need to restart the Outlook clients to apply the fix. Now, here's where I don't understand this. Um, however, some workarounds are not were foolproof, though, but here's... Um, Here's what I don't understand, is that how the hell did Microsoft slip this past out, slip past this to goalie? Like you got a soccer player who's uh, defending the goal. How the hell did Team Microsoft and Team User? Okay, so it's like a soccer match, right? You got two teams. You got the users. It's like uh, Tron, for example. Uh, you got the system and the users. Microsoft the system, and the other end is the users who use, uh, like the users, the power of the user. What happens is Microsoft kicked, kicked the kicked the ball or whatever you want, kicked the ball past the users goalie, and screwed them, and screwed them royally. How did they? Um, the client that I spoke to today said. He was having that issue, um, but he had an on-premise exchange server. And he was saying to me that his last update was roughly about April. Now, that's something that I need to look into because how the hell did he get an update? How did it affect him if uh, Windows updates have not been pushed out? That's what I want to know. This is all come. I saw the writing on the wall and Microsoft was starting to force updates. I just knew this was going to happen. This was bound to happen. This is just my personal opinion on this view. But this was bound to happen because this is going back to the Windows 10 rubbish about forced updates. And I have seen in the last few years that certain things like, oh, my files have disappeared. And um, I think there's one occasion, was it? Yes. Files disappeared because the updates, and Microsoft, sit, uh, this is opinion, this is all, This I don't know if this is all fact, but this is based on my personal opinion or what I have observed around in the online communities, is that Microsoft knew. They didn't do nothing about it. And... Um, um, it's quite upsetting that, um, so, Jesus, I hit the microphone again. Um, like small business users, um, those are the ones who get impacted the most. And I feel sorry for them. I truly, truly feel sorry. Now, a lot of people, like, we had bad Windows versions, good versions, bad versions, but... I think Windows 10 is okay. It's fast, it's snappier, and 
There are a few things that I didn't like about it. There was a few little interface things I didn't like. I didn't like the settings thing. The syn it's like the, the new control panel settings thing. And um, which I'm a little bit worried about the next few um, service packs or major updates that's going to start really annoy the crap out of me. Um, um, yeah, so... I knew that this was going to happen because Microsoft was forcing these updates and look what happens. It cripples businesses. It's, it, actually, I lost, um, was it on Friday? Um, the company I work for uh, during the week, um, we're with a Vodafone carrier and I had a number of people been trying to call me and... In, in the area I was in, um, where I was working, and it was just a, like two degrees and spark were working, but um, but Vodafone wasn't really working, and it was like very annoying. And um, but that that that's sort of the point is that um, Microsoft is getting away with this. Uh, they are trying to spy on like. Obviously, we all know that Google's been spying on us. So every time I go to, uh, um, peop I don't know if you know this. I'm going to give you an education lesson, right? So if you go to something like a website, like, because um, um, I do watch a lot of uh, Linus Tech Tip videos um, and a lot of other tech videos, and he does a bit of like um, ads baked in which is something that I've been looking at, but it can be a bit of a pain uh, to deal with when you want to swap them out and all that sort of stuff. Or well, when things go wrong, uh, I've seen a few cases where you bake the ads and then you, you really suffered your reputation. So it's about trying to find the right thing. But anyway, I digress. But um, one of them was like Pulseway. We all know that Google spies on us because as soon as I visit Pulseway, they, um, or like Adobe or Dell or something, big major companies, you'll find that every website you go from there will point to like Pulseway, Adobe, Dell, like the one I'm looking at here right now. Shop for a laptop and save $180 because I was looking at Dell, um, which I'll get to in the next story about why I was shopping at Dell because I was on the Dell website. And uh, now Google's serving me Dell ads for the last few weeks. I will tell, explain to you why why I'm getting those ads in a minute uh, as my next story of topic. But back to the point is, this was about three or four hours of downtime. Um, some people, I don't know if, if you are wised up on this IT stuff, there's probably a an SLA service level agreement. Yes, SLA. It's called service level agreement. Now, when you sign up uh, terms and conditions of things, um, you will find that you will be it's like a contract, and they will agree to say if there's something down, they will provide like you can get your emails services go down in the next two hours response time and all that sort of. Uh, that's what service agreements does. But back to the question is, um, Office 365, I thought this was actually a server side issue. But uh, just looking into it deeper, it was a stupid Windows update. Come on, folks. Like, small businesses are suffering this. Um, not every business, and I... This is something that I need to look at, right? This is something that we need to look at. Um, this is something we need. Uh, I, I need to look at is uh, a WUS Windows Update Server, and whether it, it actually it is. Um, um, how could I say it? Um, it's supposed to control the updates on your network um, I'm thinking about implementing one for the client but it's also a cost related um, nowhere to put that box 
and um, you need a Windows server and I'm I'm trying to look at some alternatives and um, excuse me I need to have a drink because I'm getting a dry throat and um, and I'm not 100% sure if you can stop these updates because um, yeah this just this is just stupid Windows 10 I love it there are a few things wrong with it just like everything in the world. You might love it. Some people will, can find no fault with things and they love it to bits. But this just annoyed the crap out of me on Wednesday. They identified the problem and they said, oh, we identified the root cause and apply a fix which will affect users in the next three to four hours. That's three to four, th three to four hours of loss of business. Because if someone uses their emails to as a business to respond to tickets or basically provide support to customers, that's three to four hours of really annoyed customers. But this is just this is just my opinion because I'm getting I knew I knew this was going to happen. Now this is usually. Uh, this is actually taking away from Windows 10. This is I thought that because it was a, a cloud-based issue, um, it will stand to reason that uh, it was a server end. But no, they pushed a stupid update. I can't win. We can't win because end of the day, Microsoft has the monopoly, and um. And a lot more people are getting, uh, this is not just my opinion, but a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are suffering because of this. It's just, they got, it's like a monopoly. Like Microsoft, I heard Microsoft wants to buy Discord. Um, they're all buying our business. So how does Microsoft go and buy Discord? Or wants to buy Discord? And I bet I know what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and merge that with their teams. They're trying to, I don't know. I haven't really looked into this too much. But um, but it's just these big businesses, and obviously Dell is another big business so I'm going to about talk about in my next topic. But what is, what's your thoughts? Now, if you are listening to this on demand in YouTube, um, just let us know in the comments or reach out to social. What's your thoughts about subscription models, uh, Microsoft Force Updates, because Microsoft Force Updates has not been, what well, has been an ongoing issue. And whatever I do is I've been trying to find ways of stopping it um, to a to, to degree. I wish we went back to Windows 8.1 where we get a choice, or even Windows Vista, or, no, Windows 7. We get to choose of which updates we want to push out. No, we don't get a choice. Microsoft, if you're listening to this, give the IT people, give the business owners control over their computer. You might say, oh, we're just helping you out so you're not vulnerable. Still, give them the access they need to control their Windows updates so they can get they can cover themselves behind firewalls or things like that they can use other third party products to stop uh, these attacks and whatever or vulnerabilities or it all depends on how clever a network engineer you are um, you can stop this sort of stuff but seriously if your microsoft is listening give us access to control over windows updates that's all we ask Give us control over Windows updates. Every individual one of them. Like every individual update, we get control. Give us control when we want to do the updates. They have. They have. Because I found out one of my clients was using an old legacy system and created a whole bunch of havoc with map drives because of SMB version 1. As we're talking about all the vulnerabilities, this is like... Um, saying Apple's slowing down the devices to sell more. 
Yeah, I will think I might leave that Apple, my opinions for Apple for other. That's why I don't buy Apple products. Um, but this whole podcast, I'm just, for those who are still just listening now, the whole point of this podcast is let's have an opinionated discussion about technology. And I don't know if this is me ranting about it or this is sort of a general consensus. Um, if you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, let a comment, let a, let us know in the comments below. Excuse me. Or um, if you're listening to us live, uh, reach out to our social feeds and um, send a tweet. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to sort of close that topic off now because I think I've been talking too long about this, and I want to talk about the next. And it's sort of getting close to 6 o'clock now, and I probably want to go home and relax and watch some Bones. No, not watching Bones. I mean Bones, the TV series with um, uh, Temperance Brennan and Celie Booth and um, and all those other characters. I'm watching it on Disney+. Plus. Yay, Disney+. Plus. Yes. So the next topic I want to talk about is something that I'm sort of related to Microsoft, and that is Dell. Now, I would like to thank, personally thank, PB Tech um, that helped me about a year or two ago with this problem. And without them, I have found it extremely hard Um so there's a bit of a backstory because I want to actually create a video, uh, video about this. So if you see a video come out about this, um, or multiple videos to make you aware when you buy Dell or Alienware laptops, because boy, there's a lot that you don't know about what's going on with these devices. Seriously, it's like Apple. Um, not as bad as Apple, but just annoying. So, several years ago, because I have an Alien laptop, Alienware laptop, which I am, uh, I do everything. I'm actually recording this uh, live stream off this as well. So, they're not cheap as chips as well, um, I might add. Um, when we were sort of in the, when Dutchy Tech Tips was in the gaming phase, I want to start doing more gaming videos and stuff like that. Eventually, um, um, we are sort of have been looking at uh, YouTube uh, training programs and talking about diversifying your niche. And I think I went a little bit too far with gaming. I went a little bit too far with gaming, and I need to rein it in with servers, uh, Windows programming that technology gaming should be on a separate channel anyhow so when i started recording a video because i there was this jurassic park um oh, i don't have my steam open uh jurassic park was it evolution was that a new game for jurassic park or jurassic world evolution i think it was i want to google it but i'm worried that i'm gonna stuff up my stream and that's something i should have um, thought about it before I sort of started this thing. Notes for next time, Patrick. Okay, so I try to record a video. I do like a sort of like a playthrough and narrated thing, and say, so, "Oh yes, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that." And um, when I actually played the result back, um. The game sort of played fine. I think it was a little bit sluggish. Um, the video was so choppy. And I was saying to myself, so the, the game was playing sort of somewhat fine. And I said, the video is so choppy. So I try to keep changing because I use um, Bandicam to do screen recording and stuff. And it's like, why is it all choppy? And I just I just couldn't think what what's wrong with it, and um, so I said, "Oh, I'll stop it! I'll stop doing these videos." And then um, the other day, I, um, a little bit later on, I said, "Hmm, 
Uh, what's what's wrong? So I want to play Watch Dogs. I love Watch Dogs. Um, even though that's, <laughs> I wish I spent more time because I probably uh, probably knock my socks off for that game because I got both a uh, both thing. And I think there's a third one coming out. But anyway, I digress. So I decided to play. I always like starting all over again when I haven't played something in a while. I always like start from the beginning. So I start from the beginning, and I'm in the stadium, and that it's just just sluggish, sluggish, sluggish. And I said, right. I try to update my graphics. I thought, hmm, maybe it's something to do with my graphics, my uh, NVIDIA graphics. So I start titting around with that, so try to get update drivers and made it a little bit worse and had to undo it and all that messing around. And then I was just like, okay, so if it's not NVIDIA graphics, because this is when I had this aha moment. I think this was back in 2019. Um, I said I had this aha moment, and I said, right, okay, I'm slowly getting somewhere. Yep, I'm slowly getting somewhere. Again, this aha moment, and I was like, hmm. So why is? So I looked to see if I did any updates to the game. If there was any updates to the game, BIOS, everything. I looked at everything that I can think of, and there was like. I remembered, I think it was in 2017, 18, or something like that, I had trouble with charging. Yep, so if you know what I'm talking about now, then you have a good idea why I'm getting really quite pissed off with Dell. Chargers. Now, I think the standard rule of thumb of chargers and adapters the bigger the charge size of the charger, the bigger the wattage. So I needed a 230 watt power. Hang on, if I could just pull it yeah, without damaging it. Um, I think, it, yeah, 240 watts. Got to be very careful. 200, 240 watt adapter for to charge the battery and thing. Now I'm not too worried about it because I always have the power on any time. And then I noticed when I yank. The power cord out, and when I can program the little alien lights, it goes red and green when I have power. So I yanked it out, load up Watch Dogs, and it was running like full steam ahead. I said, hmm, huh, what's going on here? So then I tried to do it a few times, plug it in and plug it out, and I said, hmm. Why is my laptop performance degrading when I plug in the charger? It is providing power to the laptop. But then I start looking at it closely. Dell, to my dis, uh, to my heart's content of dismay, they have proprietary, they have proprietary laptop adapters. Now I never had this issue, like when I went, uh, like I went to something like Harvey Norman and Palmerston, and Harvey Norman's and JB Hi-Fi. Uh, they said, "Nah, you need to go and talk to Dell." Okay, so when I had an HP laptop before, prior to this, I think this is back to the PV computers days. I think that's when I recorded those videos for PV computers. On that laptop, I can't recall if it was this laptop. I think it's pre two thousand and sixteen. I think. Um, I think it was like a, they're smaller, and um, I bought one off the shelf. It was not actually an HP one, and it worked. And obviously, you have you can buy different wattages for whatever the practical um, uh, purposes you need it for. And um, so it works fine. So when I bought a different laptop, when another one cooked, uh, and a new HP one, and um, yep, they're all interchangeable. They're all, this, all right. But no, 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 Dell doesn't work that way because they have these stupid proprietary chips in them. What happens is that uh, it could be, and I sort of started narrowing down. Now, now, 
I learned my mistakes and boy oh boy, I hit me in the pocket because I got scammed. I went, I was trying to, the reason why, and I blame Dell for this, right? Now, what's happened is, um, this, this is just weird how this IT industry works or how, how uh, these tech companies work because I just couldn't understand it. All I need is a laptop adapter. Like, I was looking at getting a new laptop. Uh, unfortunately, you can't buy from HP in New Zealand. But Australia, you can. Like, online direct from them. There's some weird thing. In Dell, you can. There's some stupid, weird reseller law or bylaw or rule or something that in New Zealand that you can't buy... Um, business laptops or something workstation well i wanted a, a gaming laptop and to be honest hp is not quite up there with their gaming laptops like to get an equivalent what i've now a core i7 32 gig uh, one terabyte 512 so say 1.5 terabyte drives uh, total and storage um and it's the latest graphics cards no, that's not up, not there at all. Um, well, it's very hard to um, get that kind of performance, or you'd probably be paying ten thousand dollars. Like, nah, I can't afford that. But that aside, here I need to have another water because I'm just about losing my voice. Sorry about that, folks. But that detracts what's actually happening is. Um, they have a little blue light on the end of the plug. Now, I did something stupid. I bought from an unreputable site. And then I got a letter from the New Zealand Post. It finally arrived and said there's nothing in there. Like uh, there was some damaged goods. Um, there's something fushy here. So I tried to, and then I got, yeah, that was just stupid. That was the stupidest thing because I was looking for a charger. Now, as I said before, I blame Dell for this because when you buy something, buy something from a supplier, they need to supply parts. Now, these adapters, they probably get used for all their product ranges, even new and old ones. So they don't change. But Dell didn't sell them. And I was like, they used to sell them, now they don't. What's going on there? Is this like another company that I, uh, during what I do, uh, what um, I had the same problem with a, um, a was it healthy fixing company? Um, it was something? Oh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was yeah. It was another company in the construction industry. Um, I was looking for something to uh, something to anchor something. Um, and they didn't have it in stock. Uh, and they didn't display it on their website. They should have just said, out of stock. Don't hide the damn thing completely away. Which is stupid because this is this is what resorted me to got scammed, lost some money to get a genuine, uh, like uh, they claim to sell genuine, genuine um, laptop adapters, uh, Dell laptop adapters. And I just got, yeah, I got shafted. I, I put my hands up and I said, so just be warning you that my relationship with Dell as an IT professional, uh, that's sort of like another, like, um, it's like the Big Bang Theory, like sean has got an uh, enemy list, but this is a little bit more like uh, pros and cons list. So this is what you annoyed me with. Yep, another strike. Uh, and then another strike so yep I'm happy with your products and uh, this is why I'm happy with this and shipping delivery and all that sort of stuff and it's like pros and cons list but I was sort of detracting the part of the discussion of this um, thing is that what I don't understand is why they do this to their consumers 
I just don't understand it. Why are they doing this to the consumer? Why? Now, that's why I said uh, a few times through this uh, podcast, I thanked, uh, like a personal thank you to PB Tech because they had it in stock. And so I was like, oh, it's a New Zealand company. It's a reputable company. And I was like, yeah, okay. So there's a little bit of belief in this Chinese rubbish, uh, whatever I got sucked into. And didn't get a refund. It just, yeah, went turned to crap, really. Excuse me. And what happened is just a few weeks ago, happened the same thing again. And I said, come on, this is only two years old. Now, I've been very, very, I had to be very, very careful with it. Because there's possibility on the end of the cord of where the brick can be loose or something inside the wire towards the plug hands. Plug hands. Now, surely, why are they doing, like, when you go into the BIOS on these Alienware machines, They'll tell you that um, it says unknown. And I did read somewhere that if it cannot identify it, your thing will be accelerated. So only I get 780 megahertz processing speed out of it. 780 is ridiculous. But you would think that the computer will know, like there's like a sensor that will know how much you like those HP ones uh, know how much you're drawing in. You don't need a chip to tell you. Like you can't just walk into the store and says, "Oh, can you buy?" That's what another thing. Is it used to be, like you can go into a shop and says, "Oh, buy a, a universal remote." I'm not too happy about these reverse remotes because of some of the buttons, but you can buy a universal remote. Why can you not go and buy? Why does these shops don't sell? Why? I don't understand why. And um, and then obviously I don't know if it's because COVID or whatever it is. Um, PB Tech didn't have any in stock, and I said, "Oh come on!" I was like, "PBT PB Tech." Came through to me last time. I don't know if this is an inferior quality of product. Yes, they're made in China. Everything's made in China, but that's not the point. But I said, I need another one. I need another one because I'm lacking performance. I can't do things with it. The laptop. Um, so I said, right. Um, so I tried to ring Dell on a Sunday. Was it Saturday or Sunday? I think it was a Saturday. And it said, oh, I cannot help you. I said, I cannot help you. I can't ring back on Monday. And I said, lady, your website doesn't tell me that. I got the number off the website. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And I said, can you please find out where I can get 200 No, I cannot help you. Now, if I was the other person on the phone... Right, I'm actually confused because I rang the technical support department. Uh, the technical support department because I said this is a technical question. I said I need a there's something wrong with my laptop and I need a replacement uh, adapter. That's all I'm asking. Um, but no, couldn't help me. Or said they could have said, oh sorry Patrick, but um, you need to talk to our sales department. I said. Okay, so I'm probably talking to the wrong partner. Understandable. But I said, no. Like, obviously, she's probably from India or some other country who does call center stuff. Uh, probably Philippines, India. I don't know where these people have these call centers for Dell. Said, And it was very hard to hear on my mobile phone as well. Um, I said, no, we cannot help you. We cannot help you. It's like, I said, and I said, I'll be honest with you guys, all right? I'm getting sick and tired of your stupid, uh, stupid laptop adapters, all right, that have these stupid chips in them that prevents me getting the power I need and 
You don't sell them. You don't sell them on your site. I cannot. The last time I tried it, I uh, last time I tried it, I could not get it. So they said, "Oh, okay." So I said, "That's when I start looking at laptops." And I said, "I don't have the money at the moment to buy ten thousand dollars or and then HP Rabbit Hole." I looked at Zeus, um, Zeus and MSI, I think, but it didn't really had uh, the specs up to what the Alienware I wanted, the or greater, like the newest processor, the newest graphics card for more, um, whatever, the, the graphics memory and stuff, the GPUs. And then I said, okay, because I didn't look on the Adele website, so I went back and I opened up, tried to open up the shop because I had to figure out where my account details when I bought the laptop four or five years ago. Excuse me, I've been having another drink of water. Excuse me. And and when I found it, I said, you got to be joking. I went through all this rubbish. Last time, I couldn't find it. Now they do have it. Very upsetting. It's like... So... Um, I looked at the price last time, um, what I paid, it was a bit cheaper. Now, I don't know if this was a knockoff or whatever, and I don't think it was. I don't know. Um, the one I got now, plugged in there, had a different serial number because I was looking at the serial numbers because they're like a part number. And obviously, these have different part numbers, but it does practically the same thing. Still has the same pin configuration and whatever you want to call it, um, it was like $200. What? $200. And I said, okay, right. I don't know how long I'm going to have this Alienware laptop, but I know I'm going to put money on it. I won't do this now because otherwise I'm going to jam up the, um, uh, jam up the internet um, and then my stream doesn't go well. And I bet that probably say a month or two or later or like six months down the track, I won't be able to buy it. So I uh, went a little bit, splashed a little bit large and bought three. Yes, if you think I'm crazy, maybe. But I just knew that if this one craps out again, I'll be back to the same square one frustration with Dell and I don't know if this is Dell's fault I don't know whose fault this is um, but to be this is a very opinionated hot topic because I don't know quite a lot of people um, I think quite a lot of people had these problems uh, they tried to flush the battery out uh, because they couldn't register the uh, laptop adapter and that's what's been happening they couldn't register a laptop adapter uh, and the BIOS couldn't register and then it rejects it and then powers down or throttles the performance out of it and then you're left holding the bag. Uh, it doesn't charge the battery. Now, I do have to say, uh, from my opinion, made it, uh, my opinion on this discussion, slightly shift and I see that, yeah, you don't want to overpower and start blowing and exploding batteries. You don't want to put a 300 watts and then find um, multiple multiple um, uh, depending on what, uh, what you put in there, you don't want to overpower it. I do see benefit of actually controlling this, but surely there is a better way than it's either a chip inside your power supply or there's some sort of loose wire that comes through that chip that sends out uh, electrical frequency or something that the laptop can identify and say, yep, that's my voltage, uh, my wattage. Um, it's quite maddening. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just quite um, maddening. And I, I love to know what your opinion on this discussion so if you're listening to this on YouTube um, 
leave us comments. Hopefully I'll be able to get this on Spotify at some point. And um, if you're listening live or if you are listening to Spotify, this thing, let us know in the socials. Uh, try and get a hold of us on social. Um, I need another water. Um, I think I should leave it there because I think I did a lot of ranting and having opinionated discussion. This is what Dutchy Tech discussion is about. Let's have an opinionated discussion about technology. And I think I got a lot of pin, a lot of opinions on the two topics we're talking about. A lot of opinions today. And I would like to hear your opinions. I want to know uh, what you think. Um, and as I said, you can try and... Um, and... Um, um, let's see... Uh, obviously got Twitch ta- uh, Twitch chat, but um, okay, right. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But anyway, um, I'm looking to um, maybe have some Q and A questions, uh, technology questions. Um, maybe have it to for Patreons be able to ask questions um i i just don't know excuse me i just don't know yet how i am going to because i've been talking for over a solid of eight um an hour and 18 minutes so far and i think this is probably a um probably a time to um end this conversation um Thank you for those who are listening to us live and thank you for those who are listening to us on demand on uh, YouTube, um, also on Spotify when I get that to work. And um, yes, and I'm hoping to set up a shop uh, looking at... uh, I haven't had a chance to write ebooks and online courses. That's the goal for me to sort of have online courses available for you guys and and girls. For what's I don't know what's a uh, what's the general norm to say, but and um, and maybe maybe my next show, our next show, will be better. Um, Maybe instead of seeing that same slides, if um, the reason why I don't do a face-to-face thing is because it's a podcast. Podcast is about talking, um, not sort of a facial video uh, thing. Um, so I'm hoping to get a store. Uh, don't forget to get, I don't know, uh, subscribe, uh, watch more of our contents. And, um, yeah, I I hope you had a good weekend so far. And I feel feel sad because uh, I don't know how to do a a good outro um, to a podcast. Um, Something catchy. Um, Also, I'm thinking about um, um, what will the what our quiz will be, our COVID uh, updates, uh, uh, moment of silence update, what discussions. So today we talked about um, an uh, opinionated discussion about the pros and cons of Exchange on-premise and Office 365 and the Windows 10 update that affected millions of users that caused a big outriff. And we talked about Dell, Dell laptop adapters today, and a bit about what the show's going to be about. And um, I seem to think I'm just repeating and repeating and repeating. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy the rest of whatever, whenever you're listening to this, and I look forward to um, doing another podcast uh, podcast again. So. 
Take care, and we'll see you next time.